This video is the second part of our series on umbilical cord prolapse and presentation. Here we discuss the effectiveness, pros and cons of different maneuvers in relieving cord compression, and the potential benefits of tocolysis in this situation. Lastly, we will present the algorithm in the acute management of cord prolapse. Our discussion is based on our publication in AJOG in 2021. There are two approaches to disimpest the fetal part so as to relieve cord compression. The first one is the pulling down approach by gravity force after elevating the maternal pelvis. This can be achieved by methods such as wedging the maternal buttock, changing to chandelabra position or knee chest position. The second one is the pushing up approach by the physician's fingers or by filling up the maternal urinary bladder. The RCOG guideline recommends the pushing up approach with manual elevations or filling the urinary bladder first. The pulling down approach is the second line method. So are the pushing methods better? We have recently conducted an observational study on normal term pregnant women to evaluate the elevation effects of various maneuvers by measuring the change in the paracetamol angle of progression with transperineal scan. The smaller the angle, the higher the fetal station and the greater the elevation effect. Our results show that elevation of the maternal buttocks, chandelabra position, and filling of the bladder with 100 ml of normal saline have similarly mild effect. A greater effect can be achieved by filling the urinary bladder with 300 ml and 500 ml of fluid respectively, but amongst all, the knee chest position provides the greatest elevation effect. Furthermore, we confirm that the elevation effect of bladder filling is dependent on the original fetal station. The higher the station, the smaller the effect, and vice versa. Hence, bladder filling is less effective when the fetal presenting part is high. This phenomenon also applies to digital elevation, as the fingers may not be long enough to reach the high fetal presenting part. Besides elevating the fetal part to reduce cord compression, Another consideration is to reduce the chance of further prolapse of the cord from the inside to the outside of the vagina. In this regard, pulling methods are superior to pushing methods. Each maneuver has its own advantages and limitations as listed in this table. You may refer to this table or our publication. Further details will not be elaborated here, but we would like to emphasize that these maneuvers should be chosen wisely and with great caution, depending on the actual clinical situation. Lastly, the RCOG guideline also recommends that tocolysis can be considered if there are persistent fetal heart rate abnormalities after attempts to prevent cord compression mechanically, which we disagree. We suggest that even if there are no fetal heart rate changes yet, tocolysis should be used to reduce contractions for several reasons. First, prevention is preferred rather than treatments of fetal heart rate abnormalities. Stopping the contractions may also prevent further expulsion of the cord by contractions. Neutral contractions counteract the elevation force. There is a potential risk when the condition's fingers are pressing on the fetal skull. If membranes are intact, reducing intrauterine pressure helps to prevent the rupture. The potential drawback of tocolysis is postpartum uterine atony, which, however, can be minimized by the effective use of utotonics. Hence, based on the different maneuvers review and the urgency of delivery in different situations, we propose an algorithm in the acute management of umbilical cord prolapse in cases with a viable fetus. If vaginal delivery is imminent, assisted vaginal delivery can be performed to expedite delivery. Otherwise, cesarean delivery is required. While preparing for cesarean delivery, the fetal heart rate should be assessed to decide the urgency of delivery. Simple and fast maneuvers should be immediately performed to elevate the fetal presenting parts to relieve cord compression. Manual elevation of the presenting parts should be done during vaginal examination when the diagnosis is made. The patients can then be put into the chandelabra position of at least 15 degrees if she is on an adjustable bed. Otherwise, elevation of the maternal buttocks can be achieved by placing a fake pillow or wedge under the patient's buttocks. 
The Chandela bird position on wedging the maternal buttocks replaces manual elevation, which can free the medical personnel for other more critical roles, such as preparation for the delivery. In the presence of uterine contractions, immediate short-acting tocolytic agents should be given to lower the compressions on the umbilical cord and to prevent further protrusions of the cord. If the umbilical cord is outside the vagina, warm and moist wrapping should be used to protect the cord from trauma and to reduce vasospasm due to the cold external environment. If cesarean delivery is not yet ready, but fetal distress persists despite the above first line treatments, Additional maneuvers should be considered while delivery is being arranged. The choice of the second line maneuver depends on whether the patient is cooperative and mobile, the availability of suitable instruments, and whether the cord is outside the vagina. The knee chest position is preferred if the patient is cooperative and mobile because it has been shown to have the greatest elevation effects of the fetal presenting part. Knee chest position can still be adopted when the cord is outside the vagina, but extra care has to be taken to avoid traumatizing the prolapsed umbilical cord outside of the vagina. If postural change is difficult because of the inability to cooperate or anesthetic effect, or if the cord is outside the vagina, urinary bladder filling with 500 ml of normal saline should be performed while awaiting cesarean delivery. If a urinary catheter is not available, a steeper chandelabra position of up to 30 degrees would be the alternative. Thank you for watching. To learn more about the techniques and management of emergency obstetrics, please visit our SOFI website.